here with uh, someone that I regard as an expert in a number of fields, uh, as well as a friend. He, he is a counselor, he's an author, he's a radio and talk show host, he's a newspaper columnist, and if, if you ever pick up the journal or the truth, you're going to see his article somewhere, but he is none other than Dr. Sam Millett. So Dr. Sam, as we like to call him, um, <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Always good to be back here with, with you. Well, I, I'm glad you took some time out of your schedule because you do a lot of things. And I don't know how you do it all, but I, when I asked you to come, you, you said you would come. And I, I appreciate that more than anything else. Yes, sir. No, it's an honor and a privilege, as I always tell you that. So Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. Next time I bring hamburgers or something. <laughs> Hey, that's fine. <laughs> but let's let, let's talk about something that you really have. You have some wisdom and some insight in, and I think it's more than just knowing. You have a you have a kind of a gift in, in terms of relationships. Uh, you tend to feel both the male and the female side of things enough so that you can respond for both uh, for both parties. Yes, sir. So. Let's talk about some of the latest things regarding relationships. You, you mentioned something before we started uh, regarding expectations. And I know that when you go into a relationship, you have certain expectations. But at the same time, I know that each person is putting their best foot forward. And it's like you see that person for the first time, you said, they are everything I wanted, <laughs> everything I expected. They are just a hundred percent perfect where did this person come must have come out of heaven because they're everything I need everything I was looking for in a person in a relationship and everything I expected and then for some reason down the road it's like this is the worst person in the world <laughs> why did I get hooked up with this person so talk to us a little bit about uh, expectations wait do you know uh, the part of what I do uh, it all ties to Relationships, whether it's relationship with men and women, relationship with uh, politics, careers, opportunity, everything that exists is based on a relationship first. Uh, but the expectation part is a lot of times when you get in a relationship, uh, you go through this dating phase and you come together, and like you were just saying, it is at its highest peak uh, where your expectations seem to be getting met based on your perception of what you see in front of you as man or woman. Uh, but what happens is over a period of time, uh, these expectations a lot of times go down. Most people, you know, that's a, a, a foundation of divorce also is because we don't seem to feel like we're getting that thrill anymore or that thrill is tied to what I expected, what I expect because what my expectations I had before were being met. But here, here's the thing you should always look at first. No matter who you get in a relationship with, we change over time. So if you if you talk, start talking to somebody at 18, by the time you're 28, you guys should not be in the 18 year old stage. Mm. And by the time you get 20, you get 38, you should be you should not be in the 28 year old stage. Mm -hmm. So we forever change and we forever learning because even when we come together, we still started out as individuals, and so our individuality never exactly leads us what we do is we put it and uh, uh, submit it to a partnership or we compromise it with a partnership which is a wonderful thing because a lot of times when you have those partnerships they fill in the voids or the blanks uh, that you had or I like to say the wants and needs you didn't know you wanted or needed mm. until you got with that other person so mm. they feel that but when you have expectations you, you got to look at it like this when you get some uh, with somebody you on a journey and say this journey is 10 miles and two people get together for 10 miles. Now, your ten is, is going to be crucial to how you pay attention to your journey. Your journey would start off maybe in Toledo or your journey could start in California, it could start in New York, Detroit, or Chicago. Mm -hmm. But your 10 miles is in one of those places. So if my 10 miles, for example, is in Toledo, we're going to walk that 10 miles together. Now, if we do our 10 miles in Toledo, what we will see is the Mud Hen Stadium. So we're going to watch baseball. We're going to pass the Huntington Center. We might see a concert. 
we might walk by one of the banks, so we might go in and cash the check, and we know we got a little money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then we go buy our favorite eatery spot, the spot we want to eat. The point in that, what I'm saying is, those are different events, different circumstances, different experiences, but the journey still is 10 miles. We're walking it together, and we're experiencing things, and as we experience things, things will begin to look different for us. I, I've had the pleasure of traveling quite a bit around the world in different parts of the country, of different parts of the world. And I'm a United States citizen, and no matter how I am as a United States citizen, it, I've been here all my life. When I started traveling world, it changed my perception a lot. Because now I was somewhere that was not governed by United States laws, but they had their own laws. Mm -hmm. And things are done different. You have to do an adjustment. You have to learn stuff. I even learned a little Spanish while I was over there. Ole. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> just different things. Right. But my point is the journey is still the same. The journey is that I'm learning, I'm experiencing, I'm growing, I'm changing. And that's what happens in a relationship. So if you get with a partner, for example, here's the bad side, that's not growing, that's not willing to change, that's not willing to move, that could be very difficult to fix or to deal with. It could be very difficult. But if you got the partner, per se, the dreams, your expectations from the beginning, know up front when you meet them, no matter how good it is, mm -hmm. it could get better or it could get worse depending on how you deal with the change, how you deal with the journey, how you deal with the development, and how you deal with the victories. Mm. That's what it's going to depend on. So the two people together don't have to be perfect. They just have to be willing. And they're willing to experience that 10, mile together, 10 miles together, whether they're in Toledo, whether they're in Detroit, whether they're in Chicago, Los Angeles, or New York. That journey is what's key. So your expectations can, your expectation will change over time. So for someone who wants to change and they're saying to their partner, uh, I, I need you to go with me in this change and that person is reluctant to go with that person because maybe they're afraid of change yes they want to stay the same is it hard to get that person to say come with me there, there's a lot more out there that we want to see uh, but you, you got to come with me if that person says no I'm not coming well, well it's almost like then I guess I can't go either Right. Well, what what now? This backs up the conversation we've had on our previous interview <laughs> experiences. Mm -hmm. Is that you have to know your partner. Mm. And sometimes I don't care how good you know them, whether you've been married for or been together five years, ten years, or thirty. Mm -hmm. You still got to know what makes them tick, what their trigger points are. But this time, it seems like a lot of times, the the, the longer you've been in a relationship, the more you got to resort back to to the original thing, which is you have to baby feed. Like when you, oh, let, me, give me, let me give you this analogy. When you first start out dating, say you found the love of your life and all that, you treating her, I'm saying this from the man perspective of the woman, mm -hmm. you treating her, taking her to dinner, y'all laughing, y'all going all over the place. But it seems like the longer we've been together, instead of doing a trip around the world, you know, a trip down and see the point and do just fine. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's almost like when you get older as a human being, you resort back to when you was an infant. That's why older people, you know, like 90, 100 years right. old, right. you have to deal with them more like you dealing with a baby. It's more They need more care. Mm -hmm. Where sometimes it's like that. A lot of times in a relationship, it's like that. The longer it goes, the more tender love and care it needs is like taking care of a little baby. Mm. So even knowing your spouse, whether this man or woman, you have to now spoon feed them mm -hmm. little at a time. They like say that you have the reluctance, but I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. And they just didn't got that way. Mm -hmm. Well you have to you have to maybe reminisce and take them back to the time when y'all used to do the two step when you first got together. So you get the two steps together and start from there. You know, you know her likes or he know her his likes, but she know his likes. And you start from there and work your way back because you might have to ease the change. And matter of fact, if you smooth, if you smooth, Doctor Wiley, it'll be so smooth they don't, they won't even know you did it to them. <laughs> so, so the other thing you're saying is it, it, it takes some patience and some discipline to say, well, you know, 
we've been married, you know, 40 years. Yeah. Uh, I don't have time to try to spoon feed you now. You you were fine before. Come on, let's come. I don't have time for this, but you can't even think like that. You may have to go back, like you said, years and years and take it slow and take it smooth and say, okay, now this is what I'd like to do. You have to work at it. Yeah, and see, in most people, what they do in reverse is the longer I've been with you, mm the less patient I am because you should know now mm. we should be able to do this but it's actually the opposite mm. the longer you go the more slower you have to you have to spoon feed each other because we still get in our ways but we got in our ways just because of time changes and growth and what we have to do instead of getting frustrated we have to use that to our advantage and most people don't use that to their advantage so they need to take you home with them so they know what to do. Yeah, or or for, for simple simple terms, you should start dating her again. Uh-huh. And act like you don't know this woman in quarter. Now, I need her to change so we can move to a different city, but she don't want to move because her family and all of them is here. And she not losing her family, but you got to convince her to move. So you got to get Rico Suave on her, whatever. It pulled her in in the... In the, in the in the beginning, but the beautiful part is, if she started with you in the beginning and you still together, you got all the information and the data. Mm. All you got to do is come out with the equations. Because I said on this show one time, there are actual equation. I mean, uh, 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 equations mm -hmm. that women, for example, work through in their emotions. Like if you pay like attention, like formulas. Formula. Mm -hmm. It's definitely formulas. Mm -hmm. I've created some, <laughs> I found out about some, and I have put it in it for <laughs> And they work. And the, and the funny thing about this, and I, I, I'll slow down on that one as well, once you understand how her emotions work, there's no way she can get around of being a certain way when you trigger them right. Mm -hmm. So if she happy, mad, and then happy again, and that happened because she was mad at you because you didn't take out the garbage, then you took out the garbage, then she was happy. Mm -hmm. That's actually an equation. Mm. In that situation, that's actually an equation. Wait a minute. Okay, she was mad when I did it. And, and if you're really good, you document all this stuff for those of you that go to school. <laughs> write it down. And then you have a whole column, a whole book of emotional sequences. I'm telling you. God is my witness. There's no way a woman can get around him if you want to make her happy. Mm. What, when, 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 yeah, that, that. <laughs> We're going to let that marinate. We're going to let that marinate. <laughs> what about when someone says, uh, we, we didn't make it because we just grew apart? What are they really saying when they say that? Uh, a couple of things they say. Most of the time when somebody grew apart, it means they quit trying, number one. They were willing to settle with status quo or how they are. Because one of the most powerful things you have to watch out of your relationship is called inertia. Inertia means when we get in a routine and we just get used to the way things without changing it or, or, or hyping it up or doing, you know, doing something different. Mm -hmm. And that's, you have to watch out for that because once you get in a, everybody has a system. Then they, you know, get up in the morning, get the kids ready, whatever, go to work. We have a system. Mm -hmm. But you cannot live in that system all the time, every day. You got to change that up every once in a while. Whether you do it after you get off of work or whether you have date night with your, with your wife or whatever, you, you got to change that up because then you get in a habit. Then you wake up 10 years later and realize, wow, I really ain't did that. I'm kind of bored. I'm going to go find somebody else because we just grew apart. Basically, we gave up on trying. Number two, we were willing to settle for status quo. And number three, we thought something out there might have been better or being by myself might be better. Mm -hmm. There are some people, and I, I, I'm seeing this as, uh, for men as well as women, you make a mistake in your relationship, they hold on to that and they never forget. And there's almost nothing you can do to redeem yourself right. because they remember 30 years ago what you did and they keep that in the back of their minds and you spend the rest of your life trying to make that up to the person but they still hold on to it are are, are some people more bent to hold on to something than, than others rather than let it go 
Yeah, a lot of times when somebody holds on to something that they uh, that they uh, won't let go, 